G'day mates, today's video is sponsored by sleephq.com. On SleepHQ, you can upload and share your CPAP data with anyone and from any device that can read an SD card, visit sleephq.com and sign up for a free account today. G'day mates, how does your body know when it's time to go to sleep and when it's time to wake? Now I know what you're thinking, it's when the sun goes down, right, and daylight fades. Well that certainly plays a role, but if I was to go deep underground, where there is no light, well I'd still fall asleep and wake at similar times without the cues of light and dark. Interesting. There are two main forces that determine when to sleep and when to wake. The first is a tiny little internal clock located deep inside your brain that creates a 24 hour circadian rhythm that makes us feel tired or alert at regular times throughout the day. And the second is a chemical substance that builds up inside your brain and creates what's known as sleep pressure. And the longer you've been awake, the more pressure there is to sleep. In today's video, I'll focus on the rhythm. Now nearly all creatures on this great planet of ours create a circadian rhythm, which helps control rhythmic patterns within your body and mind. Wake and sleep, eating and drinking, moods and emotions, metabolic rate, core body temperature, and the release of many hormones, just to name a few examples. And get a load of this. The likelihood of breaking an Olympic record has been clearly correlated to the natural peak in the circadian rhythm early in the afternoon. Even the timing of births and deaths are influenced by this incredible pacemaker. Here's something that I find fascinating. Your circadian rhythm is somewhat of a faulty clock in that it runs a little slow. Instead of being 24 hours and in sync with the rotation of the earth, it's roughly 24 hours and 15 minutes. Now that 15 minutes doesn't sound like a lot, but you can imagine it wouldn't take long for your internal clock to be way out of sync with night and day. Lucky for us, sunlight saves the day and the night. It's like a finger and thumb on your faulty internal timepiece, just winding it back to the precise time each and every day. So how do the vision impaired reset their faulty clocks? Well, in the absence of light changes, the brain can use other repeating signals, food, exercise, temperature fluctuations, even social interactions to help maintain good time. Now your biological clock has a very impressive name. Are you ready for this? It's called the suprachiasmatic nucleus and it sits just above the crossing point where your two optical nerves meet right in the center of your brain. And can you guess why it's placed precisely at that point where your two optical nerves intersect? It's so it can sample the light signal from each individual eye and use this reliable light data to reset your faulty clock. Pretty cool, huh? Have you ever heard someone say, I'm not much of a morning person or I'm a bit of a night owl? Well, it turns out this isn't by choice. You see, the peaks and troughs of the circadian rhythm can be strikingly different from one person to the next. Those morning larks, well, they get their peak wakefulness early in the morning and sleepiness early at night. They wake up early and they're happy to do so without the need of a strong coffee as they function optimally at that time of the day. Whereas those night owls, well, they prefer to go to bed and wake up later. So if you wake them up early, well, it's gonna take a little bit of time for that engine to warm up and they generally need a few coffees to do so. There's also people who fit in somewhere between these morning larks and night owls. Now an individual's preference on when they prefer to wake and sleep is known as their chronotype and it's strongly influenced by genetics. They really don't have a say in it. Unfortunately for the night hours, they're normally forced to comply with that standard nine to five working day, which is not really suitable for their chronotype. So they normally end up sleep deprived, having to wake up and fit in with all these early rises. Now you may be wondering, how on earth did we get here? How did we evolve this way? What's the benefit to having this natural variation in our circadian rhythm? Well, humans likely evolved to co-sleep as whole tribes. And back in the day, those night owls, well, they'd stay up late into the evening watching over the tribe. And then early in the morning, the morning larks, well, they'd wake up and take over. Therefore, the period of time when that whole tribe is asleep is far shorter and therefore they're less vulnerable as a result. 
And there you have it, guys, the suprachiasmatic nucleus. This tiny little clock is the central conductor in life's biological rhythmic symphony, yours and every other living species. I hope you enjoyed Nico's little science lesson today, guys. If you did, give it a thumbs up, share it with your mates, and subscribe to the channel for more helpful content. Until next time, guys, sleep well, look after your mates, and I'll see you soon. Bye.